Hey there everybody, this video will cover a quick review for every truck in the year 2 season pass for SnowRunner, meaning trucks from phase 5 to phase 8 working through in release order with labelled chapters so you can easily navigate around so whether you're a newbie player or a veteran trucker, sit back, relax and enjoy. Year 2 started with phase 5 bringing firstly the Tatra Force T8157. This truck is obtained after completing several missions in the Don region. See the card in the top right. This truck doesn't consume extra fuel with all-wheel drive engaged, so leave it on permanently. Unfortunately, the diff lock is on a toggle too, so you'll need the low gear to fully utilize the trait. The truck can have a few different add-ons, though not a huge amount, but including saddle high, fuel tanker, sideboard bed, loading crane, and ramped towing platform. I use this truck exclusively with its crane and sideboard bed as it can also tow a trailer making it a great candidate for 6 cargo missions. It has a fairly heavy chassis so it isn't easy to roll over either. A couple of downsides include that the loading crane which is firstly very slow and secondly very bulky making loading single cargo piece difficult when trying to get close to the crane. The truck's turning circle isn't particularly great either, so tight spaces will require some forethought. I wouldn't bother with the ramp towing platform to be honest, it's much easier just to tow a vehicle with a winch because at least you can keep the engine running. On the whole though, it is a solid truck and a worthwhile companion for sure. Onto the Tatra Phoenix, which I pretty much just use as a tanker truck. It has a unique tanker that it shares with the Tatra Force, but this truck cannot do quite as much as the Tatra Force can. It cannot utilize both the crane and sideboard bed together, meaning you have to select between them, but you can run the crane with the saddle. Again, both all-wheel drive and diff lock are on a toggle, but the all-wheel drive of this truck will cost more fuel. A note for both Tatra trucks is that the wheel hit points are actually set to 100 as opposed to the regular 50 of what other trucks normally have giving you a durability boost. I think to this day I've only broken one wheel on a Tatra truck. Another unique aspect to this truck is that it has all-wheel steering making the handling brilliant, especially for carving through muddy terrain. Ordinarily, wiggle steering through tough terrain aids just the front wheels, but with the Tetra Phoenix, when you wiggle all the wheels, this compensates more for the mediocre tyre options. Moving on, Phase 6 brought us the ANK Mark 38 Civilian, and there really isn't much to say about this. The performance is identical to the regular ANK Mark 38, so a 200 litre fuel tank, chunky tyre options, and it can be very fast. However, the civilian variant has the potential to equip either saddle, a tanker, or van body for repairs. It is available from level 1 for 75,000, so it makes for a quite nice starter truck as it has all wheel drive and diff lock always on and good stock tyre options. So, you know, it's a good pick for New Game Plus, but perhaps not recommended for hard mode given the thirst of the engine. When using this truck, do be aware that because of the truck's speed, be careful of rocks and branches as they will tear down the wheels and suspension parts in no time at all. A decent utility truck, but perhaps not to be relied upon in the long run. Onto the unique Aramatsu Forester. This dedicated logging truck features a swiveling cabin whenever you start to use the crane, and also a light on the manipulator, meaning you can easily use the log crane in first person in either day or night conditions. This truck has an articulated frame and independent rocker suspension to ensure maximum contact with the ground at all times for all 8 wheels. Speaking of 8 wheels, all wheel drive is always on however diff lock is on a toggle. Chunky mud tyres help this truck soldier through most terrains with ease, though it is not the fastest vehicle ever built. Suited for both short and medium logs, this truck can also tow a trailer enabling more log transport or whatever else needs to be moved. I do wish though however that the switch between short and medium logs was achievable in the function menu rather than having to go back to the garage. The reason for this is the add-on design itself for medium logs is a set of rails that slides out from the back of the vehicle enabling a longer carriage for longer logs. Do be careful however when crossing rivers as this vehicle does not have a snorkel. The prize of phase 6 is the Tega 6455B and it arrives to destroy all in its path. Up there for sure as one of the best and most versatile trucks in the game, capable of using pretty much any add-on required, this longer wheelbase cousin to the Tega 6436 is built mostly the same. 
still having all-wheel drive and diff lock always on for maximum performance regardless of conditions but due to the smaller cabin you can run now the crane flatbed trailer wombo combo for maximum cargo transportation this Tega retains the massive tires if you want to use them and does feature a spare wheel on the roof which is nice and prevents you scraping the undercarriage of the truck. However, obtaining this truck does take a few hours as you are required to complete a series of contracts to rebuild the lumber mill in phase 6 itself, but it is definitely worth it. The longer wheelbase does mean that the turning circle isn't quite as tight as some other trucks, but and as always with fast trucks, do be aware of small rocks and branches as these will annihilate the, the various parts of the truck. I don't particularly want to dwell on phase 7, but I must, so starting with the Azov 43191 Sprinter, uh, this is primarily a racing truck added for this specific DLC. It has no practical use in SnowRunner at all. It cannot support other trucks because it is just four wheel drive and it will struggle in harsh conditions compared to any 6x6 or 8x8 truck. Its only function is driving around some of the contests in phase 7. I mean, yes, it does have all-wheel drive and diff lock always on, but it has fairly limited tyre options. In fact, for dirt racing, its best tyre option is actually the chain tyre. So outside of Phase 7, there is literally no use or need for this vehicle, and it is a shame that nothing practical was actually added for this particular update. All other trucks can be used outside of the DLC that they were intended for, but not this one. Now, following up with the Gore by 4 with its silly little clown horn, at least this can tow a trailer, but obviously it won't do it very well because it's tiny. All-wheel drive and diff lock are both on a toggle, and the tires that actually come with it are the best for the vehicle, which is pretty rare. Definitely usable as a scout so long as there isn't much mud for the journey. However, this vehicle severely lacks durability. The tires are fine, but the suspension has just 100 hit points, so a big hit can be crippling. You do carry some spares on the roof, and it isn't worth sharing them with another truck unless absolutely necessary. Not sure if it was just me, but I also found that driving this thing at speed was not easy, as it just squirrels around all over the place. Rounding off year 2 with phase 8 and the Kiravets K700. This is the first tractor you will take possession of, and it is pretty good for what it's intended for. You will definitely want to make sure that you have the appropriate engine and gearbox upgrades prior to its use though, as although it isn't useless without them, it does need the extra power. All wheel drive and diff lock are always on to prevent wheel spinning like crazy, the way it did in the initial release, so glad that was fixed. Capable of towing farming trailers and having a bale loading fork or a van body, it can carry out a few different tasks and it does make for a decent recovery vehicle. The bale fork can be a little tricky to use, but you're not entirely dependent on it, which takes the edge off a bit. Good speed on roads and four options for tires to select from, though there's little difference between them, so it's mostly aesthetic. When farming though, do have a fuel tanker nearby for replenishment, as you won't be able to fully farm on one big field on one tank of fuel. Definitely a fun drive, especially as the snorkel is on the roof, so water isn't a problem either. So this is a good candidate for rescuing the very next truck in this list, which is the Kiravets K7M, which is a modern rework of the K700. Unfortunately, this truck does have less power overall, which I find a little odd, but don't let that dissuade you. It's decent at hauling trailers, from regular farm equipment to regular trailers, all-wheel drive and diff lock are always on, as they should be, and a healthy fuel tank will keep you tractoring for a good while. This vehicle reaches its peak when you acquire its tyre upgrade. This enables you to equip the double wheels, which have ultra-level mud performance, though it does slightly hinder the turning circle, but that matters little. As with the K700, the K7M snorkel is on the roof, so watch it plough through flooded areas with absolute ease. Again, make sure you have the advanced special gearbox from Alaska, plus the various engine upgrades for maximum potential. A difference between this tractor and the K700 is that this one lacks the bale loader fork, though this isn't so bad as you can lift bales with a crane anyway. This too would also make a solid recovery vehicle given the traction and power of the tractor. The last thing to note with both tractors is the lack of suspension in the same manner as the CAT TH357, so off-roading will be bumpy as all hell. Rounding off the last of the year 2 seasonal vehicles with the STEP 39331 Pike, this plucky little off-roader that is easy to get hold of is a great, great workhorse. Capable of running many add-ons, plus great power to weight on top of all-wheel drive and diff lock always on, 
solid mud tire options mean that this truck is basically the whole package for general day-to-day -day operations. The fuel tank can be a bit of a limiting factor at just 250 litres, but this isn't so bad. In the initial release of the PTS, this truck had access to a crane flatbed and trailer combo, but changes were made for the full release and the flatbed was exchanged for a unique sideboard bed, which is huge, and it also prevents that combo from being enabled, which is a big shame. I used this truck a lot during the PTS phase prior to the release of phase 8 and can definitely recommend giving this truck a go. So that wraps up things for phase 5 to 8 and if you missed it, click this video here to see quick reviews for every truck from phase 1 to 4 and have a great day.